Hi guys, Mike here from KES Bushcraft Down Under. Uh, today I'm going to rattle you out a review of this Adventure Kings 150 piece bush mechanics tool kit. So, to be honest with you guys, I didn't pay for this kit, okay? But I'm not accepting any editorial conditions either. So, for those that watch my videos, you'll have seen my Yorktown tool walls. So I have one small sort of weekender kit and my expedition kit and a separate socket set is the way I roll. Now I've been at this for 40 years and I worked as a mechanic so there's a significant investment in that kit there uh, with high grade tools as well which I've had for an awful long time. Now if I leave this vehicle parked at the station I don't leave stuff like that in the car. So this kit is either aimed at a beginner or an affordable kit that you won't cry too much if it goes walkies, which does happen unfortunately. So when I first started out as a young bloke, I had cheap tools and it was normally the sockets and the ratchets that failed. And one day I ended up with more stitches in my finger than I really wanted. Then I went down yeah, with bandaged in hands and I bought a, a SIG Chrome yeah, tool set, which I've still got today. Now that cost at the time the equivalent of four weeks rent. So in today's money that would be about two thousand dollars. Ouch. In more than one way. So this kit here you can pick up for a hundred Australian dollars, which is about sixty US dollars. So I would say it's gonna be a lot of bang for the buck. But you are not getting trade quality stuff. Okay? So as I take this apart for the first time. Well, compared to what I roll with, and go through it step by step in no particular order. Well, first out of the box is a hacksaw. Adjustable tension, and the base has been put in upside down, of course, to keep the cutting edge away from the bank. So, 24 teeth per inch. Pretty useful blade for uh, cutting most metal and stuff. So, this is what I carry. Funny enough, it's 24 teeth as well, but a much better blade. So, a single handed great for having to cut something out so useful bit of kit I would buy probably better quality blades just hacksaw blades are one of those things that quality really counts but a top idea to have something that you can cut, cut metal with or, or anything they'll call them hacksaws for nothing so that's a, a good idea All right, number two a metal file so half round on one side flat on the other if you've got damaged bolts or you need to make something fit, a file is really handy. Obviously mine's a lot smaller with a, a pointed end. So top edition. That ball pin hammer. Looks pretty solid. Decent size. Bigger than the one the one I carry. But if I need to really hit something, I usually have an axe with me. So if I need to do it really hard, I've already got a heavier tool than this. So this is eight ounces probably 24 so a good addition all right we've got three sets of pliers so far so electrical pliers with a cutting edge i mean it's a bit of movement but they feel reasonable needle nose also with cutting so it's, and it's side cutters so virtually exactly the same as what i've been carrying but these are c-chrome ones these are really good pliers Trade quality, of course. So, they've got a combination set of circlip pliers. So, depending on how you hook them up, they go from internal to external. Use these holes, virtually identical to what I'm carrying. Right, so they've included a crimping tool and a wire stripper. Let just barely get, it, get open. Well, it'll eat, it'll ease up with a bit of lube. Boy, it's a couple of handed job at the moment. So, I'll need a bit of attention. It comes with a selection of standard blade fuses and connectors. So, if you tear a piece of wiring loose, you'll be able to do a field patch. So, useful. Now, I have no problem stripping wires using regular pliers. So I don't carry a set of those. Set of vice grips. 
incredibly useful. Whether it's holding something, clamping something. I've actually used a set of these when I lost the nut off the tow ball. I don't know how many is that. So this is mine. Now I also have a small set. Incredibly useful. And I usually have a set of water pump pliers or channel pliers as well. So that's them. All right, they've supplied a, a 10 inch shifter. Now the biggest I carry is an 8 inch shifter. But I've got spanners up to 24 mil. So useful thing not just for holding the other end when you've only got one spanner of the right size but also for you know, bending sheet metal or whatever. So if you only have one 10 inches is a good size, but I said I carry two smaller ones. A pretty good look on selection of uh, combination spanners, all in metric of course. So, smallest appears to be 8, and the biggest is uh, 24. So uh, most things you're going to tackle on, on a modern four-wheel drive vehicle. It comes in this little pouch. I think I would look for a, a spanner bag rather than having to put them all on there, but it's better than searching through the entire bag for them. So I'll spin you around. I'm going to pull all mine out to show you. So I'm the same. I'm running from 6 up to 24. I also carry a selection of uh, dwarf ring spanners, because they are incredibly handy. Alright, so 6 screwdrivers. 1, 2 and 3 Phillips. Got a nut on the end, which is really handy if you have to bash on something. Because we've all abused the flat bladed screwdriver. Now, there's not many flat screws on modern vehicles, but for using as a pry bar, they're also hexagonal. So you can actually put a, not that I recommend this, a spanner onto them to give you a bit of leverage. So a pretty good selection. Mine's a bit more extensive than that. So a couple of large ones in seed chrome ones. They're the same here through the handle so you can get away with abusing them a bit and some smaller ones and some I have some 90 degree ones for getting into awkward places and two stubbies one of which is double ended so I carry more screwdrivers than provided in this kit but it's a pretty good start right they're providing you a set of uh, metric allen keys we have got the ball swivel on the bottom which is quite useful sometimes so I've got a similar set. I also have a set of uh, Torx, because especially the modern, modern cars have these on fitting, so a bit of a pain really. And I have a whole selection I've collected over the years of various bits, which can go into this little drive handle I have. So, but finally, a good start. So a half-inch drive braking bar. And normally with cheap socket sets, the first thing to fail is the ratchet. So don't crack anything with a ratchet. Use a braking bar. But don't tighten it up with this either, yeah? unless you're doing wheel nuts. So this is mine, which is decades old. Now mine has a handy feature in that it takes a half inch drive extension. So you can make this handle quite big. And it fits in my tool rail really nice. So great to have. Oh well, let's have a look at the sockets. Right guys, into the sockets. So the smallest one is 8mm and the biggest is 32 Now I think the CV joints on the Hiluxes, those with the independent front suspension, are around 32 I think maybe 33 anyway. So a decent range. Now I really like six-pointed sockets because Rather than the 12 pointers, it does less damage. So that's a smart choice. There's a universal style knuckle, single extension, and two spark plug sockets. It's been a while since I've pulled spark plugs out of a car like this. But if you've got a petrol vehicle, it could come in really handy or lawn mowers. Ratchets offset, it's got a lock button on it, which is cool. So you can get your sockets in and off. It feels alright. Got an upswept handle, which I haven't had a handle like that. So it feels reasonable enough, but I said use the braking bar for what it's designed for. Comes in a separate bag. 
I'd have to put this on a, uh, a socket rail, that would drive me nuts. Yeah, so I'd, I'd clip most of the small ones onto a socket rail like this. I'll keep it much better organised. So I'll give you a look at my socket set. So in my case I've got a good quality 3.8 socket set. So I've also got some of these star drives. And uh, I've got adapters so I can run my half inch breaker bars on these sockets if I have to. So we've got good crossover. So I'm not going out there to pull off heads of cars. So I've got those. And some reversible wheel stud stockets. So probably the most heavy work I'll do in the field. Right, that's the bag empty you guys. So it's a reasonable off bag. Well I wouldn't trust the zip a thousand percent. But workable. Got some pockets on the outside. So as a starter I think it's pretty bloody good. The screaming emissions I think it doesn't have. Right guys, the first thing is I would add to this kit is you've already got a ball pan hammer and a hacksaw. So why not add a cold chisel so you can cut a bolt off or break a bolt if you have to. Bonus. Simple test light, you can track down a lot of electrical gremlins if you know how to use one of these. And I usually like to carry a uh, a battery tester as well. It doesn't need to be the world's greatest or a fancy multimeter. One of these little jobs will tell you if the alternator is working or not. So that would be my starting point. But bang for the buck, it's a bloody good kit. I can't testify to using these tools under really extreme loads and stuff, but from my experience I would say that usable. Not tray quality, but usable. Now there's enough room in the bag to fit in a set of jumper cables and stuff like that so you can very quickly put together a really good kit. Anyway guys, if this content helps you out, helps you make good decisions, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.